Welcome to the Sober Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Anderson. I decided to end my decade-long love affair with alcohol in 2012 at 29 years old. I chose to live openly as a recovering alcoholic with honesty and humor while figuring it out one day at a time. This space will bring you weekly episodes of my own personal experiences with my addiction and sobriety, as well as me interviewing incredible souls who are living life without drugs and alcohol. This podcast is here to inspire you, empower you, uplift you, and bring you some laughter along the way in your own journey. Sit back, relax, and let's have a time. Hey, welcome to the Silver Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Anderson. You are listening to episode 64. If you're new to the show, feel free to go back to episode one and catch up on all of the great stories, resources, inspiration, laughter, the living on the L edge, the show within a show. You'll get some laughs on that one. You get to listen to how my sister and I react to one another. Make sure if you haven't already, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show. That way you don't ever miss um, an episode for sure because you don't want to. Anyways, today is a good show. I have a wonderful guest on. She has helped me a lot in my own journey, especially in 2020, you know, with being my coach because coaches need coaches. People need, you know, I'm a big firm believer of different avenues of help along the way of your own journey. Because sometimes what works for people, what works for you in one year of your journey is not going to not get, you're not going to relate to it for four years down the road. So she definitely helped me in 2020. She still continues to help me. And I loved our conversation today because it's, it's about her own sobriety as well as you will hear me call it NLP voodoo. <laughs> but she also talks a lot about limiting beliefs, which for all of us, whether you're in recovery or not, limiting beliefs is one that you have to get past. And it's it's these beliefs you get stuck on. So it's crazy. So please welcome Mindy Hubner. And Mindy is a NLP practitioner, a certified health and life and success coach, and a hypnotherapist. She's been an entrepreneur for over 24 years. Mindy knows unlocking your magic is the key to creating an extraordinary business in life. She's an author, speaker, coach, mentor, and difference maker. Seriously, Mindy's the shit. (laughs) I believe I said that to her, but she knows because I've said it to her quite a bit. And she inspired me after working with her last year to get in the game of the NLP hypnosis certification. So my plan was to have that done before the baby came, but obviously that's not going to happen. So that will be, I will be certified for that in 2022 for sure. And definitely be adding that onto my coaching packages and and that experience with one-on-one coaching and of course, group coaching. Speaking of that, I am not taking on any more one-on-one clients. Just to let you know, until about the end of October, beginning of November. But I'm still going to be in my group coaching program, Sober Focus, through my little maternity leave. Okay? So if you're needing help in your journey, please feel free to check out Sober Focus. You can go to my website, CourtneyRecover.com, or you can find the link in the bio. And that is my group coaching program. We do four calls a month. There's workshops each month. Tons of resources to for help in your journey. And you get access to all the previous calls and the previous workshops since I started this coaching program in April. Please come, please come and join if you're needing help. And it's definitely for any stage of your own sobriety journey. So whether you're three days sober or two years in, I focus a lot on emotional sobriety because I do believe that is a key to long-term physical sobriety from drugs and alcohol. And you got to work on that. Seriously, for reals. So again, you can go to my website, courtingrecovered.com, and find the Sober Focus Coaching Program. And on a page, it says a lot more about it. Also, 
let's have a little word from our sponsor, Organifi. I love these supplements, and they've been really helping me throughout this pregnancy, and I will continue to to use them post-pregnancy in my day-to-day life. Organifi is a line of organic superfood blends that offers plant-based nutrition made with high-quality ingredients. Each Organifi blend is science-backed to craft the most effective doses with ingredients that are organic and free of fillers and contain less than 3 grams of sugar per serving. Like Organifi Green Juice, with essential superfoods and a clinical dose of ashwagandha, it helps reduce stress and support healthy cortisone levels or Organifi Gold, a a superfood tea that supports rest and relaxation so you can wake up feeling refreshed. Each Organifi blend is easy to use by simply mixing it with water or your favorite beverage while on the go, and they don't compromise quality for taste. Organifi takes pride in offering the best tasting superfood products on the market at a price that works out to less than $3 a day. You can experience Organifi's high quality superfoods without breaking the bank. Go to www.organifi.com slash SoberVibes and use code SoberVibes for 20% off your order. That's Organifi, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com backslash backslash sober vibes and use code sober vibes for 20% off any item. If you do the link in the go to that or the link will be in the show notes and it would autom- it's automatically going to apply that discount at checkout for you just to let you know on that. Greens and I started using the glow which is their collagen which is amazing. Tastes good. I just put it in my water. One of my water bottles fills up for the day, and I just add it there, shake it up, tastes like pink lemonade. It's refreshing. It's refreshing and doing great things for my skin, and like I said, I will continue using these because this is quality, quality, quality supplements, and if you like supplements, I would suggest investing in these because they are great, great, great quality, as well as Organic, non-GMO, vegan, that's what's great about the collagen too is that it's plant-based and there's not a lot of good quality plant-based collagen on the market. So give it a try, let me know, drop into my DMs and tell me what you are liking about your Organifi products, okay? So I hope you enjoy the show. As I said, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show. Also, too, make sure you're following me on uh, Instagram at Sober Vibes and tag me and let me know what you think of the Sober Vibes podcast. I always love hearing from you guys. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Mindy. Thank you. Hey, Mindy. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very excited that you're here. <laughs> and again, I explained it in the intro, but I met Mindy Mindy was my coach for 20, all of 2020, when she taught me a lot about energy work, limiting beliefs, the NLP voodoo. (laughs) So Mindy, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, your background and how your sobriety journey started? Sure. Gosh, I I guess I'll just start right there. Like I, I, I never thought oh, alcohol is like destroying my life or I, I wasn't to that point, but I was to a point where I would wake up in the morning after a weekend or a night or whatever and think, how many things did I say that I wish I wouldn't have said or how many, you know, like I did it while I, while I'm all about breaking the rules. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like the feeling <clears throat> of free falling like that of was that going to come back on me? I didn't like to be out of control that way. I guess is a really good way to put it. And, and so after just way too many times of waking up, like feeling guilty about what I could have just said and not, we're not talking about like, you know, any major things. It's yeah. just right. Like didn't sit right with me. It was out of alignment for me and not feeling my best either. Like, mm-hmm. you know, wanting, wanting to feel great in my body. One day I just decided I'm just not going to drink anymore. And that's that. Mm-hmm. And that, well, that was the really the beginning because anyone who quits drinking knows 
and stays sober, anyone who gets on that sober journey, people get all kinds of weird. (laughs) And especially for me, they really, I noticed that they made it about them. Uh Well, Well, why can't you just have one? And I know myself well enough to know, like I've, I could have one and like, then that would maybe be two. And I had decided. And if I'm nothing else, like I'm, I'm a woman of my word. And so I had made the word to myself and it was several year like growth path because I had to shift from friendships that were really weirded out that I wouldn't drink with them anymore, that I didn't need to. And they felt like I was judging them or making it about them. And I would say to them over and over again, guys, this isn't about you. Like you do you. I, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about drinking or anything else. It's just not working for me anymore. That's it. And it, it was really a very, very interesting thing. People, people got real weirded out. And occasionally now when I meet someone new, they get weirded out. <laughs> I know, isn't it? But that's how like, that's how embedded it is in, in our society today. Well, it, you, sorry, go ahead. No, it's just it's just embedded into our society today. And I, I you you posted something, I believe. Sober vibes did. You did. I I swear this was you. It was like if you told people like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not drinking water ever again. People be like, yeah, right on, right. But <laughs> like you tell them you're not drinking alcohol. I'm like, why? What's wrong with you? Right? It's crazy. <laughs> well, it's the only drug on planet Earth that you have to you have to explain to people why you're not using i mean you know yeah somebody if you bring a crack pipe some out somewhere or a line of cocaine <laughs> people are going to be like oh my god what's what is what is going on but with alcohol it's just so socially acceptable yes yes so when did you stop drinking gosh it has been 15 years okay it's been it's been 15 years is my is my guess probably more than that actually. And yeah. that's 17. And did you, do you, did you feel like, see, because this is where it's very interesting with the lines, because there's a spectrum of kind of like an alcohol use disorder slash addiction. And did you seek out any type of help when you quit drinking or it was just more of, I don't physically feel good after I drink? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't seek out any help. I just decided I'm sort of that way about things. Uh, It's a superpower. I'm not going to lie about that. Like that is not a way that most people function with stuff, you know? Right. I, I come from my, my dad's side of the family is both my grandparents were alcoholics. My dad quit, I remember when my dad quit drinking and he was right on the verge of being an alcoholic. My uncle is a recovering alcoholic. Like it's very, you know, <laughs> so strong in the force, Luke. Right. <laughs> on my dad's side of the family. And I didn't feel like those words never came into my mind that I thought this is where I was. And mm. I, I just was like, yeah, I can, I can do better for me. Like I can feel better. I can, I can just do better for me. I can be happier without this. This isn't something that I need. And so there was no, 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 treatment necessary right really that way i sometimes avoided going where alcohol was going to be because i didn't want to i didn't want all the questions and i never do that anymore now i don't give a shit you know what i mean like right right yeah i mean you're comfortable and it's been 15 years exactly and that's the thing some people don't i mean some people don't know that they don't need that type of help but for you you are a pretty woke person (laughs) And that yeah. I've always been woke and just with you saying that it didn't align with me and to know that about yourself is a powerful thing. And I think that women need to hear that more, that it's okay if alcohol is not aligned with with yourself and how it makes you feel. Exactly. Exactly. And I we get so caught up in like, well, this is how I relax and this is how I get rid of stress and this is how I have fun. And you know, because we work together as a coach, part of my job is, and, and my mission, there's just not even if it's with a client, if it's just with another human that's allowing me, you know, asking or allowing me, you get to find new strategies. Like there's no, there's, there's zero shame in finishing well, like close that chapter and find a new strategy to 
deal with stress, to have fun, you know, look like for all of it, like there, there's finish well, you get, you get to, you get to finish well. And that looks like treatment and support. And, you know, it looks, it looks like a lot of different things. It doesn't have to mean shame. There doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, I'm ashamed of, of the journey that got me here. Like there was, you know, we get to bless and release who we were because some of those pieces we're going to take with us because some of those pieces are powerful as fuck. Like we created a foundation and some of them no longer serve us. And so we just get to let go of that and, and move to who we are becoming now, now that we've got new strategies, now that we have seen a new way, we've got a new perspective. Yeah. I like that. Bless and release. I'm going to take that one with me. <laughs> but I mean, because I, I describe it as grieving your old drinking self and not not acting like it never happened because there was some there was some joyous moments. And two, that was a part of you that you can't just dismiss of your life and pretend like it never happened because that's not that's still living in that shame, you know? Exactly. And I think exactly. I think people have a hard time releasing it. It takes time. I don't want to say that it doesn't, but it does take some time to be like, okay, you know, I, I did this. It happened, but I'm not going to let it overtake me and continue for me to live in that shame zone. Exactly. Exactly. So, well, congratulations. I don't think I've ever said that to you, but I mean, that's, a, you know, I mean, 15 years without a drop to drink, that's huge. Whether, whether it was, you know, whatever the situation may be, but it's, it's to go through this society and then also to in the past year and a half because it's been very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> not, not drinking. It's, it's a huge deal. You know, can I, I just want to like, Part of that for me too is, and this is, you know, from our work together, this is about identity as well. Like, who am I at my very core? And I identify as sober. Yeah. I identify for me at this point, and, and I know not everyone who is on the sober journey is going to be able to say this or, or to say it every day. But for me at this point, I don't wake up in the morning and think, am I going to have a drink today? Like I don't identify in that any, anymore. You know, it's been, it was a process, you know what I mean? And I, and I know that, you know, anyone listening to this, if they're in the sober journey, then they're in that process too. And the more that we embody that identity, the less that thought, you know, is a constant. Yeah. It's that's very true because I agree. I, I'm I'm not in that. I'm not. I I identify as a, a sober woman at this point of my stage of my my recovery. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it is. It just becomes a way of life, and it is something that you have to work on mentally to say that to yourself. And I've told clients that, like, because that's what I learned from you of that identification of like, yeah, you need to act like you are that person and to say it to yourself. Right, right. You get those small wins, you know, you start proving it to yourself. Little hinges swing big gates. Every time we prove it, prove it, prove it, because our brain's deleting, distorting, and generalizing based on our beliefs. And so what are we believing about ourselves? That's what's going to be able to come in. That's what's going to go from unconscious to conscious. And so the more we believe in the direction of the healing that we want, the direction of the, the new being that we want to become, then the more that proof can come in and we think a thought and we, we have a belief and then it creates a habit. And so then we can create these new habits that make staying sober easier and, and going back to drinking harder kind of a thing, you know? Yes. Can you please explain what an NLP coach is, which you are? Sure. Well, I can explain my, my, style yeah my brand <laughs> yes please do of nlp coaching sure i'm a an nlp neuro linguistic programming practitioner and i use techniques like traveling on your timeline releasing limiting decisions releasing base emotions we have uh, emotions that we could have you know, if you're woo like me, could have carried across generations <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and you get to release them. NLP is about the, the 
the study of excellence and modern, or excuse me, modeling patterns. And so we get to take learnings from everything and release the shame or the guilt or the anger and, and take what, again, the, this is the bless and release, right? Like when we get to take what will serve us and move forward. And so I, I use releasing limiting beliefs and, and the timeline technique a lot in my practice in my, with clients. And I love the, well, I use reframing, which people do and don't even realize that it, that it has NLP in it. And that's just when we look at something from a new perspective, just, you know, instead of I have to, I get to. Like we reframe it. We, we get to see the benefits of shifting our words or shifting how we feel about something. And we reframe and, and it, it becomes second nature eventually if, you know, if that's what you choose to like reframe and get a new perspective on it. Like what's good in this? Yeah, there's going to be some shit, but what's good in it? You know, and then you get to build on that. I also <laughs> use something called the swish pattern where we, we replace old patterns, old thoughts, old meanings and identifications and put a new meaning with it. We have a new association with it so that we can just start to become that new identity that we want. Those are a couple of, of the things that I use. It's really like words are powerful mm -hmm. and who we are being, how we are showing up. There's principles of success in NLP that I use all the time. And knowing our outcome is huge. And there's outcomes and goals. Goals are an aim, they're a direction, they're a purpose. Goals are great. Outcomes are what actually happens, right? Outcomes are where, where we see the results of our action or inaction. And, and so if we are looking for the patterns of success and that success is defined widely, success might be going through a whole day without having a drink, right? You know, right. So, yeah. or, or it might be making a million bucks. Like it gets to be all of those things. It's, there's no one definition of success. And so when we're looking at the patterns of success and we're modeling excellence, like the, the, the best way for us to be aligned and get to the outcome that we want, we get to know our outcome. We get to like really know our outcome. We get to take action. And then we get to check the data. I think this is where a lot of us, we, we miss this step. Unfortunately, there's not failure, right? There's checking the data. And so if I, my outcome is drink more water, I'm just going to use it. I use this example all the time. And, and I take actions and then I check the data and I'm not getting in enough water like I wanted to. I'm not reaching my outcome. Well, what's the data telling me? What are what actions am I taking? What am I thinking? What am I surrounding myself with? Who am I being? As though I'm just looking for the patterns that take me closer to what I want or take me farther from what I want. And when we look at it as data, then that that can really make a shift. You know, it's not it's not failure. It's okay. What am I what am I learning in this? I'm learning. I didn't like that. <laughs> yep work like I wanted it to, but I learned from it. So it couldn't possibly be defined as failure when I can take something and tweak it. And then that's the next step, right? In, in success is seeing the data and going, okay, my outcome is still vital to me. It's still a necessity for me. It's still what I want to achieve. I'm going to now be willing to change either my behavior or my identity or the actions that I'm taking or, you know, they, like that being willing to change in there is huge to then move, move forward. Because, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That's totally true. And then too, that's, that's a thing with when drinking is problematic and you keep doing it and it's like, it's, it's not going to change. It is not going to change. And in the work that we did together in 2020, that's why in the beginning of this podcast, when I said the NLP voodoo, I would, I would message Mindy and be like, fuck. <laughs> after, after a session of working with her, I'm like, God, I love your NLP voodoo, which <laughs> then inspired me to get certified in it. So, which I'm still working on, but that awesome. those certifications are going to be done before the baby is here. 
Whoa, congratulations. Yes, yes. Congratulations. That's that, incredible. That is one of my, I had like three pregnancy projects this year and that was, that's one of them. So the other two are done and now I had the time to focus on that. But Fantastic. because what you taught me in that, it was like, I I didn't know. Okay, so I don't, I don't like to say that I knew, but I knew it just didn't know how to apply it, but it also aligned with my beliefs in my own coaching of like, yes, this is true. Like how you said of changing the perspective. Mm -hmm. I've stated before, like sober life isn't happening to you. It's happening for you. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge perspective of, of shift that I learned in my own sobriety and recovery. So NLP is the greatest. Yeah, no, I totally, well, I use on top of that. We take, I use NLP to like root out some of that garbage that gets ingrained in us, those beliefs that, that the world put on us or, you know, that were family based or anything like that and or our own to root those out. And then I add the layer of hypnosis Mm -hmm. to really form those new pathways, see that new identity have that that feeling inside of being released from those things and being able to move forward. Yes, which those hypnosis, that hypnosis session was amazing. So this is what I would like you to share with us because I believe this is huge in something I have learned and then also now tell my own clients and people in sobriety of you really need to protect your energy. And you and I did some energy work last year. and. Because I had to because of still working at at the restaurant and taking on the energy of the public. Mm -hmm. That was insanity last year. Yeah. Yeah. So share the mental rehearsal. Yeah. Of how how people can protect their energy and all of that. Okay. So mental rehearsal first is visualization on steroids. It is you not only seeing the outcome again we talked about outcome the 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 result that you want it's not it's not only seeing it it's hearing it it's tasting it it's smelling it it's feeling it in your body it's all of it like you're embodied in this outcome you're acting as if already so when you mentally rehearse and we're talking about protecting your energy i'm going to give you some tips for visualizing some ways to protect your energy and as your, well, we're just going to use that exact example, Courtney. So Courtney was going to, to, you know, work with the public to, to be in a bar slash restaurant, right. And, and mm-hmm. serve people. And in order to not take everyone's energy in, then we talked about creating this bubble, like a force field around you. And you can have a whole little ritual with it. You know, I stand in my, like, Wonder Woman pose and then, and I picture this bubble all around me and it can be whatever color you want it to be. You know, what color empowers you and makes you feel good and what's in the bubble. In my bubble is unconditional love and, you know, power and strength and nothing gets in the bubble that isn't mine. Like nothing gets in the bubble that isn't mine. I can be gracious and loving in the bubble and, and nothing comes in that isn't going to serve me. And I, I see that and I hear it and I feel it all around me. And then I can mentally rehearse, how am I going to show up at my shift at work? Who who am I going to be? What am I going to say? And I get to rehearse my end because this is, (laughs) this is the only thing that we can control, right? Us, how we show up, who we are being. And so I see myself like driving to work, listening to my favorite tunes. I've got my bubble and I'm getting myself in, in that zone for really like showing up at my highest and best. And then I'm at work and I'm still got my bubble and I'm seeing my bubble. And the one guy that always comes in and that's always a complainer that can bring me down, like it's just bouncing off, you know, like I get to visualize all of this and, and hear it and taste it. Like I said, like literally embody it. And, and this can be... This is you setting yourself up for inevitable success. You get to visualize and do mental rehearsal with anything, any outcome that you want in your life. It can literally be one conversation. It can be how, how a podcast is going to go, right? Like how you're going to show up on a podcast and, and vital to you and, and to all of us, but 
but I remember us doing this too, was then like clearing the energy Uh at the end of a shift, at the end of a day, when you get off a call with a client, like when you leave a store, even if you're an empath, you know, and you pick up on all that stuff. My, my favorite way to clear energy is to just take a big deep breath and imagine just this sort of angelic (laughs) right? Like coming over the top of me and then picturing the cords that I picked up all day, just being gently released from me, the attachments, the connections that were made, like being released from me, the things that got in that I, that I didn't, that aren't serving me, like releasing all that, not like a cutting or a chopping or a yanking, but really a gentle release. And as this this goo is covering me. It's healing all of those places where the cords were attached. And, and we have cords with lots of people. And sometimes they serve us and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they serve us and then they no longer serve us. And so it's, it's all about just releasing what isn't like for my highest and best now, what isn't serving me any longer. And again, like clearly this is our, our mantra, bless and release, right? Like this is, this is what we're doing in that. And, and you can also take the next step and see the the other person if you know there was a cord there that was being released and you can see it released in them and them healed. You don't have to. You don't need to see the other side of it. You get to just see yourself, all the cords released. And and I like to also like just sort of release any energy that that I don't want to keep anymore. And so that comes out in a different sort of color, right? And and just gets transmuted into the air, right? It's 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 all good then. And so you can do that for anything, but that protection of energy and it's the intention in it, intentionally setting the bubble in the morning, intentionally clearing out at night, it, it will really make a huge difference for you. It's a, and also something of physically to release that type of energy I had learned, which I, I don't understand why I never did this for for as long as I did. But again, that's one of those things where it's just you you learn. I would then end up taking showers at night. Absolutely. When I got off a shift. And I think I told you one time, I was like, oh my God, that just felt so good. And that ended up becoming a little ritual just because, you know, working with the general population for anybody, it's 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 hard. And for women in early recovery, all stages of recovery, because you really do learn about yourself. You're so raw and you start learning like, I'm an empath or a highly sensitive person. And this is something I didn't know about myself because I numbed out for so many years with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And just being that raw newborn baby of what you become in 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 sobriety of, of seeing things differently, this energy where you have to protect your energy and it the stuff helps i mean i would before when we were working on that last summer then i would go in i would just sit in my car and then put the little bubble around me <laughs> listen to some music and then i would go in and and after that i was just like god this really works <laughs> what our intention right like yeah your brain deletes distorts and generalizes based on what you believe so if you believe like this will work for you. This, this can work for you. You're the kind of woman that this can work for. You deserve to have your energy protected. All those things. When you bring all that in, then you'll start creating habits that reinforce that belief and those thoughts. Like this is, this is how our brain works. And so these are all micro habits to support the macro habit of protecting your energy, like whatever it takes. Right. 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 Totally. And that's, do you think, because I've done the cord cutting before too, I've done that in meditations and that helps. And if if anybody's having a, a hard time with a toxic relationship or to going back to just the relationships you, the friendships you have with people that are only about drinking, because we know that exists. You know, I've had riveting conversations I've said before with people high on cocaine and then it's like crickets the next day. <laughs> But you get into this mindset that these people are your best friends and it's just sometimes you have to cut the cord on some toxic relationships. But Mindy, do you think you could do that with a substance? That is an amazing question. And I I do. I absolutely do. I believe that you can release and, and release a cord from anything 
that's not serving you. Gotcha. Anything that's not serving you. So you could sit in meditation and see that. And, you know, what is what is your beverage of choice? What is your substance of choice? Like what what's the one that, you know, that's your go to? And you could see it and you could bless and release it. Like I, you know, it, we've had some great times, but not enough. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. And, and I'm finishing well. Cause this is, so not only what I, what I hope, what I know that people will take away from this. And, and I want to talk about our, of course, energy as well, that we get to just, this is the secret sauce to all of this. Not only are we taking bless and release from this, like these are the three things that I, I hope everyone takes, bless and release, as well as, you get to finish well. There's no shame in things coming to an end. Uh-huh. It's who do you want to be as you end it and move on to the next thing? Factual. Not a marriage, not a relationship, not a business association, not, you know, a relationship with alcohol ending it, right? Like finishing well. There's no, there's no shame in that. As a matter of fact, I don't know that you could get any farther from shame than finishing well. It, it's, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, comfortable, any of those things, but man, the identity shift that you will begin to make will fucking blow your mind uh-huh. if you set the intention to finish well. Uh-huh. That's right. huge. It's and, huge. And again, there's no shame if, if people experience relapse. I was reading a book recently and they were talking about relapse of where she was identifying it as recycling. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy hell. (laughs) That is like putting it that way where she was just like, you know, you kind of recycle back to to old patterns. For sure. But all that comes off of it is is growth. And I was just like, oh, that is so good. Your brain brain also is, we have habits they're primal. Like there's no, your brain doesn't know that the habit of drinking is no longer serving you. It has no idea. What it does know is it's automated and it's simple and it's easy and it burns very few calories. And so it kicks it in and it kicks it in and it kicks it in. And that neural pathway is a deep rut, like ruts in the snow. And so every time you choose the new path, the longer you choose the new path, the, the more defined the new path gets. That old highway can still be there and we can experience trauma, experience events that make us then go, I just need to, to tap into that strategy that was just the easiest that I don't have to think about. And we don't even think about not thinking about it, right? So right. that's that's relapse. It's this pattern served me, this habit served me, this strategy served me, I thought, because we all have habits to protect us. And so moving back into that, there is nothing there but growth. Like, okay, I, I talked to clients about what was happening, what happened then five minutes before you took the drink. Yep. Okay, what happened 10 minutes before? And that, let's reverse engineer this because we can pattern interrupt sooner so that you can attend. This is what we call attending. Like what's happening in my body? What are my thoughts? What's going on? Why, what makes me want to have a drink right now? Was I feeling this way an hour ago? Like there's so many places that you get to learn in that and and you just get to get curious and you get to tell shame and Gail to fuck off. Like, oh, no. you know. Fuck, right. Fuck off. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so your of course energy, I have to share in this because yeah. I, I know we're, we're coming to a close here. Your of course energy is the secret sauce to mental rehearsal. So of course I hopped on this podcast five minutes early because that's who I am. Of course I did, right? Like, of course. Of course I have a glass of water here sitting next to me because hydrated women rule the world. Yeah. Of course I, I drink water. What is some of your of course energy? Of course, when you get up in the morning, the very first thing you do is brush your teeth or have your coffee or oh, I'm, I'm inviting you to tap into your of course energy. Of course, when the sun is out, you smile because you love the sun or whatever your of course your positive, of course, energy, really good, of course, energy. That's just like, it's just is. It it just is. So can you think of some, of course, energy that you have, Courtney? Yes. When you, like, when I wake up in the morning, I have my coffee. I do okay. med- my, te- my meditation. Those are my yeah. two, two morning things. Okay. Awesome. So of course, you wake up in the morning and of course you do this and it it's good 
energy. It serves you. This is, this is your, of course, energy. So the difference between wanting energy and having energy. So that's, you do that in your having energy. You, mm-hmm. Of course, you're going to, you already have it. Like you, you already have it. It is already done. You have it. You wake up in the morning. It hasn't been done yet. And yet, you know, <laughs> it's, it's done. Right. Because it's, it's, because you're in your, of course, energy. Mm-hmm. Now we have wanting energy, which is wishy, hopey, like, I hope so. Right. Maybe. Like, oh, and there is disbelief in that wishy, hopey energy. There's, there's already disbelief in it. We're, we're not bought in <laughs> to it. So what I'm inviting you to do is take your, of course, energy, your, I meditate first thing when I open my eyes and have my coffee, right? Take this, of course, energy and copy and paste it on your mental rehearsal. So if you are mentally rehearsing, creating that bubble around yourself and and practicing being the woman who protects her energy, Mm -hmm. take your, of course, energy that, of course, you're going to do it. And of course, you're going to have the best outcome from it. And of course, there's going to be ease and joy in it. And of course, as opposed to, Hope this works. <laughs> oh, like maybe, maybe I'm going to protect my energy today. No, no, no. Of course you are. Right. So take the of course energy, copy and paste it onto the outcome that you want into your mental rehearsal and then into your day. And that is the secret sauce. Your of course energy. I love it. I'll <laughs> say it again. Samendi NLP voodoo. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Where can people find you? Uh, I Instagram is my favorite place to hang out. Yes. I'm so you can really you can find me there. I'm also on Facebook. I'm everywhere under my name, Mindy Hebner, M-I-N-D-I-H-U-E-B-N-E-R. And I also have a gift for your listeners, my guided mental rehearsal meditation. It's under 12 minutes long. It's a fantastic downloadable MP3 to start your day or start the next portion of your day with success. So I'll have a link for that just for just for you guys to go there and download it and take advantage of tapping into your, of course, energy and, and mentally rehearsing you at your highest and best. Yes, because it is worth it. And thank you for, for that free gift. I will put all of those links in uh, the show notes. And thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for bringing the energy today. It's been such a joy to be with you and and a privilege to be in this space with your listeners. So thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thanks.